Well, good morning, everyone. You're very welcome to our, our service here in St. Luke's Parish Church here in Loch Gaw. It's Sunday the 17th of May. I'm, I'm, I'm surprised even when I say that. Um, even in lockdown, the, the weeks seem to be, be flying by. I, I wonder if that's the same for you. I trust you're all keeping well and, and we hope that you enjoy our service here today. This is a, a family service, um, so we'll have a particular emphasis on, on our kids and young people and uh, you're all very welcome to uh, our service today. Just by way of, of announcement, I, I want to mention again, I know I do every Sunday, the Food Bank in Armagh. Thank you uh, to those folk who have donated food items and, and, and also financial contributions to the Food Bank. They're very, very gratefully uh, received uh, at this time. I want to mention as well, just this is our, our, our little service sheet um, today. You notice there's a little Bible there uh, and I put a little note just saying, uh, take time to read your Bible every day because if it remains unopened, then it will be unable to have any impact uh, on your life. I know, I know we know that, uh, but it's so important. It's so important in these days to be reading uh, God's word. So let me encourage you uh, in that uh, also. I'm gonna read to you some verses from Psalm 98 as we come into the Lord's presence uh, to offer him our worship and our praise. And to hear his holy word read and proclaimed uh, in this place and we ask that he would move in our hearts uh, in the power of his spirit at this time. Psalm 98, some verses. Sing to the Lord a new song, for he has done marvelous things. His own right hand and his holy arm have won for him the victory. The Lord has made known his salvation. His deliverance has he openly shown in the light of the nations. He has remembered his mercy and faithfulness towards the house of Israel. And all the ends of the earth have seen the salvation of our God. Let us pray. Our Heavenly Father, we thank you for your grace and mercy shown towards us in your Son, Jesus. And we thank you that even though we're not here in this building, in your house, Lord, we know that we are meeting together because we meet together in your name this morning. We ask that as we do that, Lord, that you would bless us with a great sense of your presence and your peace among us. Lord, help us in this service to know the reality of the nearness of your wonderful grace and presence. I ask these things in Jesus' name. Amen. We're going to sing our opening hymn of worship, which is hymn number 115 in our church hymnals. Thou art the way to thee alone.
Some words there reminding us uh, that Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life. And that's what we're going to be focusing on again um, today in, in our service. But with a particular emphasis on Jesus as the truth. As always in our services, in order to come to worship God, uh, we first of all come to confess our sins to God. Thankful that he's a gracious God, he loves us so much, and he is only too willing to forgive us all the wrong things uh, that we have done. So we come to say a sorry. And the response is save us and help us. God our Father, we come to you in sorrow for our sins, for turning away from you and ignoring your will for our lives. Father, forgive us, save us and help us. For behaving just as we wish, without thinking of you. Father, forgive us. Save us and help us. For failing you by what we do and think and say. Father, forgive us. Save us and help us. For letting ourselves be drawn away from you by temptations in the world about us. Father, forgive us. Save us and help us. And some assurance our Father's forgiveness. May the Father of all mercies cleanse us from our sins and restore us in his image to the praise and glory of his name, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. The collect the special prayer for this now, the, the sixth Sunday of Easter. God our Redeemer, you have delivered us from the power of darkness and brought us into the kingdom of your Son. Grant that as by his death he has recalled us to life, so by his continual presence in us he may raise us to eternal joy. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. I'm going to read to you again. Same passage as the last Sunday. We're reading from John 14, a few verses from John 14 and beginning at verse 1. I am the way and the truth and the life. Let not your hearts be troubled. Believe in God, believe also in me. In my Father's house are many rooms. If it were not so, would I have told you that I go to prepare a place for you? And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and take you to myself, that where I am, you may be also. Thomas said to him, Lord, we do not know where you are going. How can we know the way? And Jesus said to him, I am the way and the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. If you had known me, you would have known my Father also. From now on, you do know him and have seen him. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Let's pray. Father, God, speak to each of us, Lord. Speak to our hearts now in the power of your spirit, Lord. We thank you that, that it's your desire to speak to each of us, Lord. Help us to hear you, to hear you today. We ask this in Jesus' name. Okay, so last Sunday, I'm sure uh, you remember, hopefully you do remember, uh, we were thinking about Jesus saying that he is the way. We were thinking about directions and destinations. Maybe you remember the, the compass and the map. Uh, and we know how easy it can be to, to get lost when we follow either the wrong directions or when we live without any direction at all. We need guidance in, in our lives so that we can go in the right direction, which is the direction that God has for each of our lives. We thought about Jesus being the way, the direction in life. And the life that he has for each of us is only achieved by each of us when we go in the direction that he has for us. And we know that that direction will lead us to the life that he has for us and also the destination that he has for us. 
when this world is over. We learned as well, didn't we, uh, that we live in a world of fake news and when we listen to the news on our TV screens or read the papers or social media or whatever, we can really struggle to try to understand like, what is true and what is false, what is real and what is, what is not real. And uh, it can be a bit mind-boggling, can't it? Really difficult uh, to know what is true anymore, you know, what, is, what is truth. That's what we're going to be thinking about uh, this morning. Jesus saying that he is the truth. He is the truth. So with this in mind, we're going to play a game of true or false. It's a little, a little quiz. Now this is for all the family. So I want all the family uh, to take part in this. Now there's about roughly about 15 questions or so. So you can keep score uh, and, and see who wins at the end of it. So, I don't know, maybe you want to pause and go and get a pencil uh, and a bit of paper. Of course, you can do that now. You can't do that in church. Normally, you can't pause uh, like that. But we can do that now. You can pause and go and get a, a pencil, perhaps, and, uh, and come back again. So, are you ready? So, here we go. True or false? In space, you cannot cry. In space... You cannot cry. Well, the answer is true because there's no gravity. Okay, next one. The inventor of the light bulb. Now, I wonder, does anyone know who that was? You get an extra point for this. The inventor of the light bulb. He, well, I'll give you his name first of all, I suppose. His name was, of course, Thomas Edison. Did you know that one? Yeah, there you go. You would, the Trevor would have known that. I think the Trevor's very smart. He would have known that. But, true or false, Thomas Edison was afraid of the dark. True or false? It's true. Imagine that. Maybe that's why he invented the light bulb, because he was just so afraid of the dark. Okay, next one. The letter T is the most common letter in the English language. What do you think? The letter T is the most common letter in the English language. Answer, false. The answer is false. I wonder, do you know what the most common letter in the English language is? Do you get an extra point for this? The most common letter in the English language is actually E. So there we go. Yeah, next one. The strongest muscle I know all about muscles now, Trevor, because I've been doing a heck of a lot of gardening, I tell you. I feel my guns here, forged in the rectory garden. Uh, the strongest muscle in proportion to its size in the human body is the tongue. The strongest muscle in proportion to its size in the human body is the tongue. True or false? Yes, I can hear you there. Some people got that right. Yes, the answer is true. Well, there you go. It's true. Right, another one. A cockroach can live for nine days without its head before it starves to death. Let me get that one. A cockroach can live for nine days without its head before it starves to death. True or false? Thinking about it, so we're not sure, maybe. I mean, hope we're not arguing about it. We're shouting. Can I hear shouting there? It's true. There you are. It can live for nine days without its head. It's true. Okay, another one. A pregnant goldfish is called a twit. True or false? A pregnant goldfish is called a twit. Do you know what, Trevor? It's true. It's true. I could be making these up, could not I? No, no, it's true. This is on, this is on the internet. Um, it's true. So there we go. Never knew that one. Here's another one. Women can read smaller print than men. Men can hear better than women. What do you think of that? True or false? Women can read smaller print than men. Men can hear better than women. Actually, it's false. Yes, it's false. It's the other way around, seemingly. Men can read smaller print than women, and women can hear better than men. Well, what I know to be true is that husbands seem to struggle to hear their wives a lot of the time. Pauline tells me that I never listen, but I do listen. 
It's just I'm thinking about something else when she's speaking to me. Anyway, there we go. Uh, here's another one. And check this one out, see what you think. Every day, more money is printed for Monopoly than for the US Treasury. What do you think, true or false? Every day, more money is printed for Monopoly than for the US Treasury. It's actually true. It's true. <laughs> it's true. And here's another one for you. Uh, I saw a guy on TV recently who collects, he collects Monopoly games. Uh, I wonder, can you guess how many editions of the game Monopoly there are? Now, I tell you what, if you get the closest, you should guess the number. Guess how many games of Monopoly there are, many editions. And uh, I'll have a guess. Come up with a number. And see, whoever gets the closest, you could get, a, you could get an extra point. <clears throat> this is quite surprising, <laughs> actually. Because there are 1,144,000 additions. Isn't that amazing of Monopoly? I'll give you uh, some examples. There is a Simpsons edition, a Walking Dead edition, a Horse Lovers edition, Bass Fishing, Cat Lovers, and there's even a One Direction edition of Monopoly. Unbelievable, unbelievable. I saw the guy on TV with all the, all the editions piled high all around his room. Crazy. Okay, so back to the quiz now, just a, a few more to go. Here we go. True or false, the longest book in the Bible is the book of Jeremiah. Is that true or false? It's true. It's true. Okay. Another one. Now, if you were listening last week, you should know the answer to this one. There are approximately 1,000 religions in the world. 1,000 different religions in the world. True or false? Well, that's false. Do you remember last week we said there are approximately 4,200 different religions in the Bible? Okay, another one about the Bible, actually, uh, since we are in church. True or false, nowhere in the Bible can you find the word Trinity. Nowhere in the Bible can you find the word Trinity. I wonder, do you think, is that true or false? It's actually true. There you go. True. Google it if you don't believe me. Okay. Two more to go. Just two more to go. I hope you're doing well. So uh, here's another one. It's my glasses. Michael Jordan, the famous American basketball player, was dropped from his high school basketball team. Is that true or false? Michael Jordan, the famous basketball player, was dropped from his high school basketball team. It's true, yeah, surprising one there. I wonder who the team coach was. Like, like Homer Simpson, maybe? Uh, not good. Okay, last one. Benjamin Franklin, who was a famous scientist, politician, inventor, and diplomat who helped write the Declaration of Independence. Very smart, intelligent man. Left school at the age of 10 years of age. Left school at 10 years of age. Is that true or false? What do you think? The last one. Well, it's true. True, which is very surprising as well. There you are. Left school at the age of 10. So, there you go. 15 true or false questions and a few extra little ones thrown in for good measure. So, I wonder how you did working out what was true and what was false. I'm sure there were a few surprises for you in there. Well, one of our true or false questions was, of course, that there are 4,200 religions in the world, which is a true fact, and all claiming to be the right one. Christianity, as we know, is the largest. We know that to be true. We also know that Christians exercise their faith in different ways, which is maybe why we have so many different denominations. Even within our own Church of Ireland, there exists a great variety uh, of expressions of, of, of faith uh, and how we worship. We know that. But the thing that unites all of us is our belief and 
agreement that Jesus and only Jesus is who he says he is, the way, the truth and the life. How do we know it's true? Why, why, do, we, why do we believe it? Well, we believe it because there is evidence as to all the wonderful miracles and signs of wonders that he did when he was on earth. How else do we know it's true? Because there were witnesses to all these wonderful things uh, that Jesus did. But also, thirdly, how do we know it's true and he is true? Because we've also seen the evidence of lives that have been totally transformed by Jesus. And I know I, I have done and will continue to do, uh, I've continued to share stories of people whose lives have been transformed by Jesus. My, my own life uh, has been transformed by Jesus. That's how I know he is real because he lives in me and has, uh, has changed my life. And when I was uh, younger, I was searching for the truth, the right direction to go in and wondered just, well, what, what, what is it all about? What is church all about? What is God all about? Is Jesus really, did he really exist? Is he who he says uh, he was? And I discovered that he, he is the truth. Because when I gave my life to him, he poured his Holy Spirit into me and uh, my life changed. And even better than that, like the direction of my life changed because my life was going in no direction at all. And at the age of 31, yes, 31, then my life took on the direction that God had for my life. And here I am today uh, as uh, your minister here in Lockall and Greens. And so kids and, and young people, it's so important to remember that this Jesus is real. He is the way to discovering a real, uh, satisfying, purposeful life for, for your life. He is the way, the only, the only way. But he's also the truth. We can believe him. Uh, we can believe that what he says is true and that we can build our lives uh, upon him. He wants to do good things and great things even uh, in each of our lives. We can trust him in this world of fake news and, I mean, there's corruption and deceit and all sorts of bad things going on. And so many, so many things and temptations want to take us away from Jesus as the truth. But we must hold on to him. And how we do that is by talking to him every day, inviting him in, into our lives every day and reading his word, continuing every day to read about him, discover more about him, and let his presence be part of our daily lives. We remember that today. Jesus is who he says he is. He is the way, he is the truth, and he is the life. Let's pray as we finish. Lord Jesus, we thank you that you came to this earth, this world to live amongst us, to show us the way, show us the way to the Father, to have our relationship with our Heavenly Father restored again. Thank you for all the wonderful miracles and signs that you showed that gave evidence that you are who you say you are. Thank you for the witnesses that saw that and recorded it uh, in the Bible so that we could know that and and learn that for ourselves. Lord, I pray you would bless most especially today, Lord, our children and our young people, Lord, give them a hunger to learn more about you, Jesus. Give them a passion to read your word every day, to commit their lives and our lives to you, Lord, finding the right direction that you have for us in this life that will help us reach that wonderful destination in the next life. We ask these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Now we're going to affirm our faith, declare who uh, we believe in and what we believe in. And you may not have the words in front of you, but if you uh, join in in the Amen at the end, you're saying you're agreeing, you're in agreement. Uh, with, with 
what I'm going to say. We believe. We believe in God the Father who reveals his love to us in Christ. We believe in God the Son who pours out God's Holy Spirit on us. We believe in the Holy Spirit who teaches us God's truth. We believe in one God, Father, Son and Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Now we're going to uh, come to the Lord in prayer and uh, this morning we're especially going to remember that a family who uh, were visited by an awful accident and tragedy uh, during the week, the Smith family up in Dunleys. So let us pray. Our Father in heaven, turn your ear to us now and hear our prayers as we offer them in the name of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Father God, we come to you in prayer seeking your peace and protection through this time of coronavirus and the uncertainty and fear which it has brought to our world. Every day the news is filled with stories of this virus and the impact it is having on our world. So many people have died and so many affected by it. And it feels like the world has changed and may never be the same again. So we pray for all who are feeling increasingly anxious and fearful. And we ask that you would bring your peace to bear. Support the anxious and the fearful that they may rejoice in the comfort of your presence and the knowledge of your great love. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Father, our politicians and government seem to be struggling to know the way forward out of lockdown. Each part of our United Kingdom seems more divided than united in how to tackle the current situation and move us forward. So we pray for your guidance on all who have the responsibility of making vitally important decisions. Strengthen them and enable them to make the best decisions. Uphold them also in what is for them a time of great stress and pressure. Help them to cope with such great responsibility. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Father, this week we have learned about another tragic accident that has claimed the lives of our mother and her daughter. Claire and Bethany Smith, who died during this past week. We pray for Hannah as she continues to fight for life in hospital. And we wonder how she will be able to bear the news of losing her mum and sister, as well as coping with her injuries. We pray for you to fill her with your presence and love, as only you, Father, can provide the strength she will need to cope with such a situation. We pray for her father, Ryan, for Claire's mother, Eleanor, and her sister, Michelle, and for Daniel, Claire's neighbour who was driving the tractor, and indeed for all within the local GB company to which the whole family were valued members. Be that ever-present help that your word reminds us you are, an ever-present help in times of trouble, and a father who is close to the brokenhearted. We uphold all affected by this tragedy and cry out to you in your mercy to deliver them from the grief that threatens to engulf them. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Father God, we thank you for everything that is good about our life together in this community. Help us to care for one another, to be good neighbours and good friends, most especially through this current pandemic. We think of those who are in need, those with large families to feed, those who have lost jobs, those who struggle to be at home for such long periods, parents and kids, those who have little access to money, and those who have no access to be able to join in with homeschooling activities through the internet. Guide us as your church and your people to serve you by serving others, seeking out those whose need is greatest at this time. Guide us to any who are struggling in any way, that we would have the privilege and joy of sharing your love with acts of loving kindness and compassion. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And Father, we pray for all our children and young people who are missing their extended family members and their friends. Help them to cope at this time and to find ways to remain positive and to know that you are in control of this and every situation and circumstance. Help them and all of us to look to you and your word as we find it in the Bible where we discover the great love you have for each of us, the plan and purpose you have for our lives 
and the hope we have in your Son, Jesus, even and especially as we seal the storms of life. Bless and protect all our children and families, our vulnerable and self-isolating parishioners, and speed the day when normal life and living will return. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And Lord God, thank you for your love that binds us together in life and lasts forever, even when we die. We join all our prayers in the words our Saviour taught us, our Father. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Well, now, as this is our, our family service, um, we uh, remember that some people uh, this month, in the month of May, have birthdays. Now, I, I only know of two. I've only heard of two. So uh, forgive me if you had a birthday and I didn't know about it. Uh, but we say happy birthday to Mary Mulholland, who had a birthday early in the month of May. And also Roy. Roy, we know it was your birthday yesterday. And we saw the pictures on Facebook. Did you see them? You saw them too, Tyra, didn't you? Afternoon tea. We had afternoon tea in the summer house. Oh my goodness. It all looked delicious. Um, well done, Liz. That's what I say. Well done, Liz. You spoiled him. You spoiled him yesterday. So happy birthday. Um, I don't have any Freddos with me here. I do have some though. So you have to check your, check your letterbox this week. <laughs> it might be a, it might be a Freddo coming through it. So there we go. But we say happy birthday uh, to you. Happy birthday. We're going to sing uh, our closing hymn. Hymn number 112. There is a Redeemer. Eternal God, your Son, Jesus Christ, is the way, the truth, and the life. 
for all creation. Grant us grace to walk in his way, to rejoice in his truth, and to share his risen life, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. The blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit be with us and remain with us and those whom we love this day and forevermore. Amen.